Quiet on the floor, please. Quiet on the floor, please. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. There is additional sitting upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Madam Public Advocate. Find the chambers all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Roll call. Quiet in the chambers. Adams. Present. Every Samuel. Present. Shh. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Carnegie. Present. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Here. Uh, Espinal. Here. Eugene. Present. Gibson. I'm here. Jonai. Present. Grudenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Moya. Perkins. Here. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. I'm here. <laughs> Ballone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Williams. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. Quiet in the chambers, please. Shh. All rise for the invocation. The invocation will be delivered by Rabbi Michael S. Miller, the Executive Vice President and CEO of the Jewish Community Relations Council of New York, located in the borough of Manhattan. Ribono Shalom, Lord of the Universe. As we gather in this chamber, we mourn, we grieve, we are in pain. It is so difficult for us to come to grips with what took place in a house of worship in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, just four days ago. How can it be that someone could enter a house of prayer on the day of the Jewish Holy Sabbath as a baby boy was about to be named in a bris? and shatter that sanctity by emptying an AR-15 assault rifle and two Glock semi-automatic handguns into the pews, murdering 11 innocent souls? How can it be that the safe space, the haven of a place we all refer to as a sanctuary, as a sanctuary, can be so cruelly and violently desecrated 
with the spilling of human blood. In 1790, President George Washington visited the Jewish community of Newport, Rhode Island. After his visit, he penned a letter to the congregation. He wrote that the government of the United States, which gives to bigotry no, san no sanction, requires only that they who live under its protection should demean themselves as good citizens. He then prayed and pledged that may the children of the stock of Abraham who dwell in this land continue to merit and enjoy the goodwill of the other inhabitants, while everyone shall sit in safety under his own vine and fig tree, and there shall be none to make him afraid. So how can it be that a 97-year-old Jewish woman, a mother, a grandmother, and great-grandmother, spoken of as a sweet and lovely lady who was quick with a friendly greeting, a hug and a smile, was targeted? Or a 66-year-old bow-tie-wearing Jewish primary care physician who embraced HIV patients when no other doctors would touch them? Washington promised safety in the absence of fear. The same question can be asked about the other nine sweet souls whose lives were brutally and abruptly terminated. The only answer we have, Lord, is hate. Hate is corrosive, eating away at the innocence with which we are born. To the best of my knowledge, there is no hate gene. One has to learn to hate. We, Lord, as leaders of the city of New York, as leaders, then must dedicate ourselves with every ounce of strength to combat this evil virus, to battle against it with all of our fiber, to wage war to conquer it with the breadth of our fortitude. Our ammunition is nothing more than love, than understanding, than tolerance, than acceptance. And we need to mind our words because words matter. We need to fashion ourselves into societal engineers, building bridges, interconnecting the gorgeous diversity that we are blessed with in our beloved city, with all bridges leading to the ideal and precious value of peace, La Paz, Shalom, Salam, Shanti. The name of the synagogue in Pittsburgh is Eitz Chaim, taken from the 18th verse, third chapter of Proverbs. It is a tree of life for those who grasp it but the fusillade of bullets this viciously broke the victim's grip. The 2,000-year-old Talmud teaches that those who cut down trees will never, ever see a sign of blessing. Hate is a curse. Love and peace are a blessing. I pray that the actions taken by this august body will merit blessing as it leads the people whom it represents closer to achieving a more just society, a society filled with mutual respect and dignity, filled with love and peace. As Washington concluded his letter, may the Father of all mercies scatter light and not darkness upon our paths. May this be your will, O Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A motion to spread the invocation. Speaker Corey Johnson. Quiet in the chambers, please. I couldn't think of a better leader to be with us on this sad and solemn and painful day than Rabbi Michael Miller, who is a friend to so many of us here in this chamber. He is, the, he is the Executive Vice President and CEO of the Jewish Community Relations Council of New York, the JCRC. And the JCRC of New York serves as the central coordinating and resource body for the Jewish community in the metropolitan New York area and is an advocate for a strong and secure state of Israel. An active force in New York civic and communal life, JCRC New York builds working relationships within the Jewish community and with other ethnic and faith communities and with public officials and governmental agencies. It works actively to promote equality of opportunity and the full civil rights and civil liberties for Jewish as well as all other religious and ethnic groups in New York. 
GACRC also works to combat anti-Semitism. Works to combat anti-Semitism and every other form of racism or group prejudice. Rabbi Michael Miller is really the glue that holds this incredible organization together. He is a true community leader, always working tirelessly to promote harmony and justice in our city and around the world. Rabbi Miller rightfully is recognized as one of the foremost influential leaders in the New York Jewish community. He has personally led more than 70 missions to Israel with over 500 influential New Yorkers, including then Secretary Clinton, Senator Clinton, current Senators Schumer and Gillibrand, Mayors Dinkins, Giuliani, Bloomberg and de Blasio, numerous members of Congress and state and city legislative leaders, media figures, as well as ethnic and religious dignitaries. New York City Council members, including myself, have been fortunate enough to be on Rabbi Miller's extraordinary missions to the State of Israel. It is an honor to have Rabbi Michael Miller here with us today. Rabbi Miller is an amazing man. He is a blessing. He is a blessing not just to hear his healing and moving words on a day like today, but he is a blessing that touches our city and creates dialogue on a daily basis. He has given his life to this dialogue and he does it in the tradition of his family, his father, who we got to see recognized at Yad Vashem in Jerusalem, the work that he did after the Holocaust in getting justice. And I know that Rabbi Miller, for someone like him, who has to stand up and lead in a moment like this, as it is also extraordinarily painful personally when you have given your life to combating anti-Semitism and to pushing back against hate and to being someone who is thoughtful, careful, and sensitive with their words. So again, it's an honor to have, it's hard, I don't even think of Michael as a rabbi, even though he is a rabbi, I think of him as Michael. It's an honor to have Michael, Rabbi Michael Miller, here with us today. And with that, I make a motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. So moved. I move now that the minutes of the stated meeting of April 26th be adopted as, as printed. Messages and papers from the mayor? None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices? None. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? M109 through M113, various applications. Uh, coupled on a call-up vote, and at this time, I would ask for a roll call vote in all of today, all of today's land use call-ups. We are just voting right now on land use call-ups. Quiet in the chambers. Adams. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Aye on all. Borelli. Aye on all. Brannon. Aye on all. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Cornegy. Aye on all. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Aye. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Jonai. Aye on all. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye on all. Kalos. Aye on all. King. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Permission to, uh, to vote on all land use call-ups and items coupled on the general order calendar? Yes. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Levine. Aye. 
Mai zău. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Aye. Perkins. Powers. I and all. Reynoso. I and all. Richards. I and all. Rivera. I and all. Rodriguez. Rose. I and all. Rosenthal. I and all. Salamanca. Uh, I vote aye on all land use call ups, and with permission, I'd like to vote aye on all items on the general. Yes. Order calendar and resolutions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Torres. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. I vote aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Woody. <laughs> Valone. Madam Advocate, permission to vote on all matters on today's general calendar and call-ups? Yes. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Van Bramer. Aye on all. Williams. Colin Kaepernick, where are you? Williams. Thank you. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Aye. Combo. Aye. Speaker Johnson. Speaker Johnson. <laughs> you want to recall? Councilmember Borelli. Permission to vote on land use and all general order items? Yes. I vote aye on all except for uh, intro 465A and intro 899. Thank you. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. Uh, discussion of general orders, seeing none. Report of special committees. Oh, hold on a second. Okay. Discussion of general orders. I think we have Councilman Van Bramer. Councilman Van Bramer. Thank you very much, um, Madam Public Advocate. I rise today to talk about three separate uh, land use uh, actions that we'll be voting on uh, today. Uh, but before I do that, I want to thank uh, Speaker Corey Johnson and his staff, particularly Jason Goldman, uh, who had numerous uh, midnight conversations with me, uh, and Raju Mann, of course, and our amazing uh, staff at the Land Use Division for helping to achieve these victories. What we're voting on today is the Hunters Point South UDAP, which is an action that a previous council took uh, to build 5,000 units of housing in, in Hunters Point South in Long Island City. Uh, that action created the units, uh, created 2,000 affordable housing units, uh, but that action included 5,000 units of housing with not one school. The action that we're going to take today is to adapt and change that action in several important ways. Number one, we are lowering the AMIs for the development, and we are approving today construction of two brand new previously unplanned schools for the Hunters Point South community. We're also increasing the number of affordable units from 2,075 to 2,446 units, nearly 2,500 affordable housing units with this one action alone. We're also voting on a much smaller uh, action uh, in the Ravenswood uh, community where we are adding another 40 affordable housing units uh, in a 116 unit uh, building. But one of the most significant actions is the Jackson Avenue, which has been a years-long struggle on behalf of the Court Square community in particular. And what we have needed desperately in Court Square is school seats and open space for parkland. And uh, in a deal where we are getting 150 affordable housing units, so again, all total, we're uh, approving nearly 2,700 affordable housing units in Long Island City with these three actions. But in this Jackson Avenue uh, uh, deal, we are getting the UPK through fifth grade school uh, guaranteed and funded at $60 million. We are also securing the space under the Queensboro Bridge ramps for the first time ever moving Department of Transportation and NYPD school safety vehicles off of those lots, returning them to the public and at a bare minimum at the beginning creating a 50,000 square foot uh, park that is fully funded by the developer in this agreement. Uh, we have 
the Civic Association, the Court Square Civic Association, and Pedro Gomez, its president, in support of these actions, and in particular, the victory at Court Square. So I want to, uh, A, encourage all of my colleagues to vote yes, but I want to thank the people of Long Island City, Hunters Point, and Court Square for fighting for the infrastructure, the schools, the parkland, uh, but most of all, the respect from this administration uh, that they deserve for too long. Uh, projects have been approved, but not with the infrastructure that this community deserves and needs. Just yesterday, the administration announced a $180 million infrastructure package for Long Island City. This is a very good start, but it is a down payment on what this community needs going forward, given the level of development that's been approved in the past. So again, almost 3,000 units of affordable housing, three new schools, a new park, fully funded, deeper affordability, more affordability, and most importantly, uh, victories for a community that has demanded respect for a long time and is finally getting it. So I want to thank, once again, uh, Speaker Corey Johnson, Jason Goldman, Raju Mayan, uh, Matt Wallace from my staff, and most importantly, the people of Long Island City, Court Square, and Hunters Point for fighting for what they rightly deserve. Thank you. Congratulations. Councilmember Eugene. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate. I would like to thank uh, Speaker Johnson for his leadership, and I would like also to thank my colleagues on the City Council who have co-sponsored intro or 644A, making it a requirement for carbon monoxide detectors to be included in the businesses and the mercantile spaces. This uh, critically important legislation will make the building code carbon monoxide detectors which were active which means that uh, the detectors must be installed in both new and existing uh, covered buildings that are equipped with fire alarm system. This legislation is a very important step in preventing incidents of carbon monoxide poisoning in commercial spaces. And to 644A, we also require that uh, the Department of Buildings promote rules that addresses the installation of the specific carbon monoxide detectors mandated by the law and other ways in which existing buildings can be in compliance. It is important that we created an environment for our businesses that promotes safety and does not leave our business owners susceptible to the risk of accidental carbon monoxide leaks. This legislation, once enacted, will uh, unquestionably save life. A study conducted by the Center for Disease and Control found that a total of 5,149 deaths in the United States were a result of unintentional carbon monoxide poisoning from 1999 to 2010, which calculated to 430 deaths a year. In New York City, more than 400 people hospitalized and 30 died from carbon monoxide poisoning from 2000 and 2005. As, a, as reported by the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. As you can see, far too many lives are tragically, tragically an unnecessary loss in the United States and New York City every year due to unintentional carbon mon monoxide poisoning. I call upon all my fellow colleagues to support into, into 644A. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you, seeing no one else on the discussion of general's report or special committees? None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Finance, Reso 564, Business Improvement Districts. Uh, pardon me, were we supposed to do communication from the speaker? Yes. I apologize. I apologize. Communication from the speaker, Corey uh, thank, Johnson, I apologize. No, it's okay, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, happy Halloween. First, let me start off by commemorating the one-year anniversary of a terror attack that occurred right here in our own backyard. It was one year ago today. We were all right here in these very chambers when we received the news of a terror attack near the corner of Chambers and West Streets. It was a horrible day and it led to the loss of eight lives, 
Today we remember those women and men, Darren Drake, Hernan Diego Mendoza, Diego Enrique Angelini, Alejandro Damian Pagnuco, Ariel Early, Hernan Ferrucci, Nicholas Cleves, and Anne Laura Descartes. May they rest in peace. In addition to this somber anniversary, I also want to acknowledge, as we heard from Rabbi Michael Miller, the terror and trauma of the past week for our city and our nation. New Yorkers are strong and we are resilient. When we learned of suspicious packages that were sent to CNN's New York Bureau and some that were located at a Midtown Postal facility, we did not cower to fear. We moved forward. And I cannot thank the NYPD and all the law enforcement officials involved enough for intercepting so quickly and preventing what could have been a major disaster with loss of life. We will not be intimidated. We will not let those who wish to terrorize our city win. And I am grateful that someone has been arrested and charged in these crimes. Violence has no place in our democracy. I also want to say this. New York City stands with our sisters and brothers in Pittsburgh. My heart breaks for the victims of the Tree of Life Synagogue murder, murderers, and their families and friends left behind. I also mourn for the entire Jewish community here in New York City and around the world. I am proud that our city has the largest Jewish community outside of the state of Israel. And I know this kind of attack, of course, unsettles Jews everywhere. Let us honor their memories by recommitting ourselves now and forever to fight against anti-Semitism and against bigotry of any kind. We do this in the memory of Joyce Feinberg, 75 years old, Richard Gottfried, 65 years old, Rose, Rose Mallinger, 97 years old, Jerry Rabinowitz, 66 years old, two brothers, Cecil Rosenthal, 59 years old, and David Rosenthal, 54 years old, a husband and wife, Bernice Simon, 84 years old, and her husband, Sylvan Simon, 86 years old. Daniel Stein, 71 years old. Melvin Wax, 88 years old. And Irving Younger, 69 years old. These are grandparents, parents, brothers, sisters, and friends, and they will not die in vain. It is so unbelievably tragic of course, that this happened, but especially that Holocaust survivors who came to our country were murdered in this despicable anti-Semitic attack. Finally, I want to send my thoughts and prayers to Jefferson Town, Kentucky, and the community there, where a man who reportedly made racist statements murdered two individuals at a Kroger supermarket both of these individuals who lost their lives were African Americans. Vicki Lee Jones, 67 years old, and Maurice Stallard, 69 years old. They were just spending their day getting groceries, as any of us would do. And we grieve with their families and friends, and we in New York City stand with Jefferson Town. Racism has no place in our society. We stand with our friends and the African American community and we want them to know, too, that we have their backs. All of these horrible events have one common denominator, as Rabbi Miller said, hatred. Hatred has no place in this city and in this country. We are better than this. It has been a tough week for all of us, every single one of us. And we may feel helpless at times, but we shall overcome. 
We have been through painful times before, and we will overcome. It is 2018, and I can't believe we still have to say that racism and anti-Semitism are evil. But I will say it. We may not hear this message from certain elected officials in our country, but I want to reiterate and be clear. We in New York City welcome everyone with open arms, regardless of your race, religion, sexual orientation, disability, gender identity, immigration status. We will extend our hand and proudly shake yours. We welcome your friendship. We welcome your presence. We welcome you to the best part of our city, which is our diversity, it is our strength. Our human rights are your human rights. Now let us take a moment of silence. If everyone could please rise. Please rise. May their memories be a blessing. Please be seated. After all of this bad news this week, it is nice to have some things to celebrate. October is National Disability Employment Awareness Month, and we are so proud of and celebrate the contributions of workers with disabilities. We are a country that should be all inclusive, and we thank all workers with disabilities for all that they do. However, there is still a lot of room for improvement we can do better. We need to give more New Yorkers with disabilities and all Americans with disabilities, for that matter, more opportunities to thrive. Those with disabilities should not be defined by their disability. We have come so far down the road of equality, but there is still more work to do. To those with disabilities, this month and all year round, we celebrate and thank all of you. We always have your backs, too. I want to give a special shout out to Anastasia Somoza the Council's first ever Disability, Civil, and Human Rights Liaison in our Community Engagement Division. She is amazing, and we appreciate her hard work for the Council. And finally, we extend our best wishes to Caitlin Fahey, Council to the Housing and Buildings Committee. She is leaving the Council at the end of the week, and she has been invaluable to our Legislative Division. We wish her the best. Let's give a round of applause to Anastasia and to Caitlin. Okay, jumping into our docket for today, the council will vote on one Article 11 property tax exemption in Councilmember Salamanca's district. The council will also vote in the following land use items, three projects in Councilmember Van Bramer's district, which you heard about, Long Island City ramps, Hunters Point South, and 1114 35th Avenue rezoning. We're also gonna vote on the approval of special permits for development in Councilmember Rivera's district located on East 16th Street. We'll be voting on a Sunset Park Article 11 exemption in Councilmember Menchaca's district. We'll be voting on Hopkinson Park Place, a modification to affordable home ownership project in Councilmember Amprey Samuels district. 21 Arden Street, an Article 11 exemption in Councilmember uh, Rodriguez's district, 6902 Queens Boulevard, a rezoning to allow for the development of housing. There'll be some affordable housing as well as a seven, as well as a 476 seat public school in Councilmember Holden's district. The council worked with the SCA and the development team able to find the 
way to get a new school, and I really, really want to congratulate Councilmember Holden, who worked very, very hard on this project. I think the first ULERP uh, for his district in his time in the council was not an easy negotiation, but he did a great job in securing a new public school uh, for uh, his district, so I want to congratulate him uh, on that. Uh, Variety uh, Boys and Girls Club are rezoning in Councilmember Constantinidis' district. There'll be affordable housing plus a new space for the Boys and Girls Club uh, of Astoria. Uh, 3901 Ninth Avenue, a rezoning in Councilmember Menchaca's district, which will result in a mixed-use building. I want to thank our incredible land use staff, Amy Levitan, Julie Lubin, John Douglas, Jeff Yoon, Chelsea Kelly, and our great land use director, Raju Mann. The council will also vote on disapproving the transfer of properties in these council members' districts. Carlina Rivera, Diana Ayala, Idonis Rodriguez, Bill Perkins, uh, and Mark Levine, districts that have properties that were supposed to transfer those properties under the third party transfer program. Under the current law, the council may disapprove the transfer of any property within 45 days of receiving official notice from the Department of Finance of the list of properties scheduled to go through the TBT program. The TBT program is an anti-displacement program designed to stabilize and rehabilitate buildings and improve conditions for tenants. Decisions to remove individual properties from this list were made by the local council members in whose district the property is located. This round of TBT involves properties in Manhattan. Those council members met with the Department of Housing, Preservation, and Development, and in many cases, representatives of the properties in order to make their decisions. The council recognized that some communities who recently went through the TBT process in the outer boroughs have raised concerns regarding this program. I know the public advocate has raised concerns. As a result of those concerns, the council will be reviewing TPT legislation and HPD practice to make changes as necessary to ensure that the program remains a viable rehabilitation and preservation tool to improve the lives of the residents in these buildings and ensure that the buildings remain affordable for many years to come. I want to thank a few council members who worked very, very hard on this. Uh, Councilmember Cornegie spent an enormous amount of time uh, on this issue. Uh, he was extraordinarily thoughtful about the issue. He took a big leadership role in understanding how we got to where we are today, and I, and I really want to thank him for his collaboration and his leadership on this. And similarly, Councilmember Kalos is someone that had been raising concerns uh, related to the TPT process as well. Uh, HPD needs to do better. Uh, we are going to make sure they do better in the future. And I know that Councilmember Amprey Samuel and Councilmember Reynoso and other council members had uh, significant concerns in their own districts about properties that were affected, uh, as well as the public advocate who has taken on a leading role in talking about uh, the issues surrounding this. So I want to thank uh, all of them who made their voices heard, as well as other council members who had properties in their district who worked with the land use staff and the legislative staff in a thoughtful and productive way to understand uh, where the properties made sense and where the properties didn't make sense, but we shouldn't have to get to this point in the future. We need a better program that doesn't put any of us in this position. Moving on, the council will vote on the following piece of legislation. Introduction 925A, sponsored by Councilmember Jamani Williams, will clarify that when a commuter van is operating in violation of a provision within the TLC's commuter van enforcement authority, TLC has the power to seize that vehicle regardless of seating capacity. This bill will also amend the definition of a for hire vehicle so that for enforcement purposes, the definition includes vehicles with a seating capacity greater than 20. These amendments would allow for the TLC to enforce against vehicles that seat more than 20 passengers, whether they are commuter vans or for hire vehicles. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Audrey San and James DiGiovanni, and I want to congratulate you, uh, Jumani, uh, uh, Councilmember Kaepernick, for, uh, for your uh, getting this done. I know it's been a lot of work. Next, we'll vote on the following uh, few building-related uh, bills. Introduction 645A, sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum, will require the Department of Buildings and the Commission on Human Rights to conduct education and outreach to businesses and the public to increase awareness of the existing requirement that single occupant toilet rooms be available for use by persons of any gender, as well as the related post 
posting and signage requirements for such toilet rooms. I want to congratulate Danny on this. He took on this issue in the previous council, passed an initial bill, and is now following up to ensure that the bill that we passed uh, is implemented in the right way and everyone knows the rights involved. Introduction 644A, sponsored by Councilman Matthew Eugene, which he talked about, will expand the building code's carbon monoxide detector requirements to all business and mercantile spaces. In addition, this bill will make the building code's carbon monoxide detector requirements retroactive, applying them to all new and existing covered buildings equipped with fire alarm systems, which must comply with the retroactive requirement by January 1st, 2021. Finally, this bill will require the Department of Buildings to promulgate rules addressing the installation of the specific carbon monoxide detectors required and potential methods of alternative compliance for existing buildings. Introduction 836A, sponsored by Council Member Robert Cornegy, the chair of our Housing and Buildings Committee, will consolidate operations for the approval processes for alternative automatic fire extinguishing systems, fire alarm systems, emergency alarm systems, fire department in-building auxiliary radio communication systems, and fire protection plans. Currently, the approval processes for these plans and systems are divided between the Department of Buildings and the FDNY. This bill will streamline this process by requiring all to be approved by the FDNY, a very important bill. I want to congratulate the chair on this, and I want to thank the staff, uh, Caitlin Fahey, again, whose last day it is. Thank you for all of your help on these bills, Caitlin. Austin Branford, Jose Conde, and Megan Chen. Introduction 899A, sponsored by Councilmember Keith Powers and uh, co-primed by Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, will permit non-public campaign funds to be spent on child care services for children under 13 years old in an election year and the year immediately preceding an election year when the need for such services exists because of the campaign. Such child care expenses would be exempted from the expenditure limit for the first $20,000 spent in the election year. Candidates would not be required to spend campaign funds on child care and choosing to pay with their personal funds or receiving below market child care would not be considered a contribution to the campaign. I want to thank the staff who worked very hard on this, Brad Reed, Elizabeth Cronk, Zachary Harris. Uh, Rachel Cordero and Rob Newman, and I know that there were numerous council members that gave very helpful feedback in Democratic conference and one-on-one -on -one, uh, with uh, Councilmember Powers in strengthening this bill. So I want to congratulate him and the majority leader. Finally, the council will vote on a package of legislation that will improve the NYPD training for assisting victims of sexual assault and gender-based crime, strengthening safeguards for victim privacy, and increasing transparency within the NYPD's Special Victims Division. I want to take this opportunity to commend Police Commissioner Jimmy O'Neill for releasing an apology letter to the Prospect Park survivor. By acknowledging past failures, he sent a message to all survivors that the NYPD has come a long way since 1994 and that our detectives are here to listen to them, to believe them, and to protect them. As more victims of sexual assault are coming forward, we need to do everything we can to make sure they are not re-victimized all over again. With these bills, we are, we are devoting our attention and resources to ensuring that their cases will be handled by experienced, well-trained investigators who understand what it means to have experienced this kind of trauma. Our commitment to helping survivors continues today with these bills by ensuring the NYPD has everything it needs and is doing everything it can to fully support them. I want to thank, of course, and I'll get to each one of the uh, colleagues who worked in these bills, but I really especially want to thank uh, the chair of our Women's Committee, Helen Rosenthal, who spent an enormous amount of time on this, every little detail, advocating, understanding the issues, meeting with survivors and victims and law enforcement officials, speaking to other folks across the country, reading academic literature, reading accounts from survivors, understanding studies and how it could affect our legislation. She was relentless in making sure that we got this package right because of how important it was and the meetings that we had with the police commissioner and Chief Shea and the top staff in the SVD and in the detective squad. 
uh, were meetings that I found eye-opening uh, because of the questions and the advocacy that Chair Rosenthal exhibited in those meetings and all of the conversations that we've had together. So I really, really want to thank her for her leadership. This package is extraordinarily important, and we wouldn't have got here without her. Introduction 444A, sponsored by Majority Leader Cumbo, will require new recruits to receive specialized training for responding to survivors of sexual assault and harassment, including sensitivity to differences in culture, gender, gender expression, and sexual orientation. The bill will also require interactive refresher trainings every two years for all uniformed members of the department who regularly interact with crime victims. Uh, I want to congratulate you, Majority Leader Cumbo. You, uh, again, have been a huge advocate on these issues along preceding this package of bills. Introduction 785A, sponsored by uh, Chair Rosenthal, will require the department to create a comprehensive special victims training program for new special victims division investigators and will require current SVD investigators to demonstrate that they're already proficient in all of the core subjects of the training program. This is very, very important about how detectives get trained in interacting with victims and survivors. The bill will require annual reporting on the content, the number of officers who have participated in the training, and any changes made to the program so that the council can ensure that the training of SVD investigators is as good as it can be. Introduction 781A, sponsored by, uh, by Council Member Carlina Rivera, will require the commissioner to limit access to SVD case files to individuals who need to see those files in order to perform their job functions. It will also require the NYPD to keep close track of who is accessing those case files to guarantee that private information will never be shared outside of the group of people who need that information to properly investigate cases and solve crimes. We do not want leaks of these files to the media or to people who should not have access to this, and this bill seeks to address that. An introduction, 784A, sponsored by Councilwoman Debbie Rose. This bill is a very, very important, and Debbie worked very hard, was tenacious with the NYPD in negotiating this bill and asking a lot of very, very tough questions. And this bill required the department to report on the staffing caseloads for the Special Victims Division investigators, as well as the factors the commissioner considered in setting staffing levels for SVD. Our investigators need enough time and resources to devote to every survivor in every case, and this bill allows us to make sure that the NYPD is taking these cases as seriously as we do. I also want to thank the Chair of our Public Safety Committee, Donovan Richards, who worked hard on all of these bills with the colleagues that I just named and for his leadership in the hearing on these bills, the sensitivity that he showed and the leadership and working with us to get these bills forward. I want to congratulate you and thank you, Chair Richards, for your leadership. I want to thank the staff on this, Daniel Aides and Brian Crow. That concludes our agenda for today's stated meeting, and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you, and have a happy and safe Halloween, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you so much. Discussion of general orders? Seeing none. Report of special committees? None. Report of standing committees? Report of the Committee on Finance, Reso 564, Business Improvement Districts. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Reso 579, organization funding. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 255 and Reso 583, 645 Barreto Street. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Four Hire Vehicles, Intro 925A, Commuter Vans. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, Intro 899A, Campaign Funds. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 465A, Single Occupancy Toilets. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 644A, Carbon Monoxide Detectors. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 836A, Fire Alarm Systems. Amended and coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Intro 11. 79 through preconsidered intro 1206 third party transfers. Coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 209 and Reso 584 through LU 213 and Reso 588, 2632 Jackson Avenue. Coupled to general orders. LUs 214 and 215, 110 East 16th Street. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission. Pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council, in section 197D of the New York City Charter. 
L, excuse me, LU-221 in Reso 589 and LU-222 in Reso 590, Hunters Point South. Coupled on in, coupled in general orders. LU-226 in Reso 591 through LU-229 in Reso 594, Sunset Park. Coupled on general orders. LU-233 in Reso 595, Hopkinson Park Place. Coupled on general orders. LU-231 in Reso 596, 21 Arden Street. Coupled on general orders. LU-235 through LU-237, 6902 Queens Boulevard. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council in Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LUs 244 and 245, Variety Boy Boys and Girls Club Rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. L LU 246 and Reso 597 and LU 247 and Reso 598, 1114 35th Avenue Rezoning. Couple of general orders. LUs 248 and 249, 3901 9th Avenue Rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. Report of the Committee on Public Safety, Intro 444A, NYPD Harassment and Sexual Assault Training. Amended and coupled to general orders. Intros 781A, 784A, and 785A, NYPD Special Victims Division. Amended and coupled to general orders. On the general order calendar, intro 720, site safety training. Laid over. LU 214 and Reso 599 and LU 215 and Reso 600, 110 East 16th Street. Coupled on general orders. LU 235 and Reso 601 through LU 237 and Reso 603, 6902 Queens Boulevard. Coupled on general orders. LU 244 and Reso 604 and LU 245 and Reso 605 Boys and Cl Girls Club. Coupled on general orders. LU 248 and Reso 606 and LU 249 and Reso 607, 3901 9th Avenue Rezoning. Coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled on general orders, and Mr. Etrix, you and I are done. At this time, I would like a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. And all members, please know that all requests to be excused will be denied. We need to maintain quorum. Sorry. Adams. That's you, Woody. <laughs> <laughs> I vote aye at all and congratulate all of my colleagues today on great legislation. Thank you. Ayala. Aye. And Bree Samuel. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. I just want to say thank you Thanks. to the land use staff in reference to the Hawkinson Park Place um, deal because I know I had a ton of questions and there was a lot of back and forth between land use and HPD. And so I just want to say really truly thank you for assisting me in this particular um, conversation and I look forward to the project moving forward and an opportunity to have real um, home ownership in the Brownsville community. So again, thank you. Thank you. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Baron. Uh, I vote aye on all with the exception of 209 through 213 and the accompanying resolutions in 235 through 237, just not enough for poor people to rent. Thank, thank you. you. Brannon. Aye on all. Cabrera. Aye. Thank you. Mario. Uh, no on 465 and no on 899. Aye on the rest. Thank you. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Madam Public Advocate, may I be allowed to vote on also the land use call ups? Yes, on land use call ups. Uh, aye on all, both the general order and the land use call ups. Thank you. Thank you. Cornegy. Aye on all. Thank you. Deutsch. Yeah, um, I explained my vote. Yes. Well, actually, I have something else to say. I just want to first say that um, uh, the speaker may be done with uh, Mr. Etrix, but I'm still going to have a voice competition with him, so I'm not done with him yet. Um, on another note, I just want to say how proud I am of um, how we unified here in, in the city council, and we had um, a unity rally on the steps of City Hall with the members of the Jewish Caucus, the Black Latino Asian Caucus, and the Progressive Caucus. And I, I'm really, really proud of my colleagues when we all get together and we stand up against hate, bias, and bigotry. And uh, we will continue to not only stand up, hopefully we don't have to do it again, but to tackle the issues and have further discussions on how to prevent uh, things uh, like this from happening. So with that said, I want to thank also the speaker for his hot wrenching and heartwarming speech. 
uh, on behalf of the entire Jewish community here in New York City and uh, around the country. So thank you, Mr. Speaker and public advocate. And it was also very um, um, after the Sabbath when I received text messages from people representing different faiths and throughout New York City and receiving a call from uh, the speaker sending his condolences to the Jewish community from actually MTA President Andy Byford and uh, Polly Trottenberg and they really stood up and we, we all are united, not only in the council, but here in, in the city as a whole. So I want to thank everyone for their condolences and for their partnership on behalf of the members of the entire Jewish caucus. Uh, with that said, I vote aye and all. Thank you. Diaz. Thank you. Ulrich. Uh, Woody votes yes on everything except uh, intro 465A and uh, 899A. I also want to wish a happy birthday to my daughter, Lily. Today's her birthday. She's six years old, and I'm going to a party now to celebrate with her. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Woody, and happy birthday, Lily. <laughs> Drum. Aye. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Uh, with many congratulations to my colleagues, especially Laurie Cumbo on the NYPD uh, sensitive training bill. Uh, I vote aye. Thank you. Eugene. I vote aye. Thank you. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate, and good afternoon, colleagues. I want to join with all of you in congratulating everyone on passing important legislation today. Specifically, want to highlight the Committee on Public Safety, the Committee on Women. Um, thank you to Chair Donovan Richards and Chair um, Helen Rosenthal, and to Councilmember Rivera, Councilmember Rose, and Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Really looking at the comprehensive package related to the NYPD Special Victims Division and sensitivity training and really making sure that we continuously look at improving our special victims unit, particularly when the victims are young adults and teenagers. And we know, unfortunately, we've seen too many victims um, of a crime, of sexual assaults and assaults on women, and particularly young girls. Um, there are always ways to improve. There are always efforts that we should constantly undertake to improve the work we do. I want to thank the NYPD for all of the tremendous work the Special Victims Unit and Chief Osgood has done, and I look forward to the partnership as these bills are implemented, because we can always look at best practices of how we can do better work. Um, and with that, congratulations to all of my colleagues, and thank you certainly to the Women's Caucus, my dynamic sisters, for always leading the charge on a lot of these issues. Uh, and with that, Madam Public Advocate, I vote aye on all. Thank you. John I. Aye and all. Thank you. Grodenchik. Aye and all. Thank you. Holden. Aye and all. Happy Thank birthday, you. Lily. <laughs> Thank you. Kalos. Aye and all. Thanks. Ku. Aye and all. Kozlowitz. Aye and all. Thank you. Lanceman. Aye. Thank you. Lander. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaka. Aye and all. Miller. I know except for 925A, abstain. Thank you. Moya. Moya. Uh, with permission, Madam Public Advocate, uh, I would like to vote uh, aye on all with the exception of land use items uh, 209 to 213 and associated resolutions on which I abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Perkins. Powers. Aye and all. Reynoso. Aye and all. Richards. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, today we're voting on a critical package of legislation uh, that we shepherded through both the Public Safety and Women's uh, Committee. As a result of the Me Too movement, more victims of sexual assault are coming forward and we want to encourage them to continue to do so. These victims deserve to feel respected and supported by the people who are responsible for ensuring that they get justice. Intros 444, 781, 784, and 785 increase transparency in the way the NYPD diverts resources to the investigations of sexual assaults. They guarantee the privacy of victims once they do come forward, and they make sure that the law enforcement officers, most importantly, that handle these cases, responds to these victims 
appropriately and that they are appropriately trained. Together, this package shows that the City Council not only takes sexual assaults very seriously, but our obligation to hold everyone accountable. I want to thank uh, all of the, the women who, who led this charge. Uh, there's no need for me to mansplain here. Um, but to our dyna dynamic chair, uh, Helen Rosenthal, congratulations on a job well done. To council members Cumbo, Rivera, Rose, uh, congratulations on, on your work. I also just wanted to acknowledge the work of my uh, committee staff, Daniel Adis and uh, Casey Addison. And lastly, just end with the more transparency we have, the more we can hold everyone uh, accountable, and, and we're doing that certainly here. I also want to acknowledge, lastly, uh, two of my fellows who have joined us today, Brittany Scott and Janine Agar. Thank you for being here today. And then lastly, I wanted to end on uh, uh, sending my condolences to the families uh, in Pittsburgh. And this sort of opens a lot of wounds back and up to the African-American community. Obviously, we saw the Emanuel Nine in Charleston killed uh, not too long ago. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I sent my condolences and let everyone know we're going to be doing everything we can do in the committee to strengthen the relationship between our Houses of Worship and the NYPD. Thank you. Thank you. Rivera. Aye and all. Thank you. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Rose. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. This time of Me Too, when more and more women and men are feeling empowered to come forward to share their stories of past incidents of sexual abuse and, concur um, and a concurrent campaign by the NYPD encouraging people to report incidents of sexual abuse, it is critically important to have appropriate staffing levels in NYPD SVD units. This spring, the Department of Investigation released a disturbing report that found that more then 70% of the crimes overall in New York City are reported to the authorities. Only 5 to 20% of sexual assaults are reported. Among the many reasons for this unacceptably low number is the understaffing of the city's SVD units. Only 67 detectives to investigate roughly 5,600 sex crimes a year. I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson for his empathic understanding of this issue and for his support and leadership, and acknowledge Helen Rosenthal's tenacity and ferocity to ensure that these, um, the integrity of these bills were preserved. And I want to thank Majority Leader Cumbo and, and Council Member Rivera and the Women's Caucus for their diligence, their insightful diligence, to ensure that these, these bills not only came to light but would pass. And I want to thank my legislative and budget director, Edwina Martin, for helping us to make these bills possible and get shepherded through. Thank you. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rodriguez. Aye. Rosenthal. Uh, permission to explain my vote quickly? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, like Councilmember Rose, I just want to thank uh, my colleagues who passed bills in this package, Councilmember Rose, Rivera, and Combo, for their tenacity in staying strong to make sure that the integrity of these bills um, were in the <coughs> final drafts that we're passing today. Um, and we could not have gotten this done without Jason Goldman and without our speaker who stood strong and steadfast, who went out of his way to make sure that we all had the time to uh, talk about these bills with the police commissioner and other important members of the NYPD, this, this historic day would not, would not be as, we would not have as strong a package had, it, had we not had this speaker leading the way. And, um, Speaker Johnson, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I really don't. Um, but you, you uh, pushed the ball forward for a lot of victims of sexual assault today, and I really thank you for that. Torres. How do you vote? Thank and you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Torres. I vote aye on all. Traeger. Aye. Van Bramer. 
I vote aye on all. I would just like to thank all of my colleagues for supporting these three very historic uh, land use items in Long Island City, Queens. Thank you. Thank you. Williams. May I excuse me my vote? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to congratulate all, all of my colleagues, especially those associated with the um, sexual abuse and assault package. Uh, this body is probably leading the nation when it comes to that. So that's uh, something we should be proud of. I did want to point out a bill that I'll be passing. Thank you to my colleagues. 1925A deals with the van industry. Um, this basically closes a loophole that prevents the TLC uh, from enforcement on vans with more than 20 passengers. Uh, it is critically important because uh, in many parts of the city, there are people now with no licenses, no insurance, and driving around unable to be stopped or do any enforcement to be able to happen. Um, I normally don't like to support enforcement unless we provided a pathway for people to earn a living. This body in particular has done that. We brought this, uh, these uh, van drivers out from the shadows. There's now a legal pathway to do so. So we want to encourage all van drivers to avail themselves of the legal way uh, to provide commuter van service, some parts of the city often called uh, dollar vans. Uh, this uh, bill will allow TLC uh, to take people who may not be licensed or may not be in, uh, insured, but simply because they have no capacity for over 20, uh, we'll close the loophole. So I'm, I'm happy with passing that. I do want to shout out uh, Lero Morrison. Some of you may have received some calls from him. Uh, he is upstairs uh, with another van driver, Winston, uh, who has been supporting this bill. I want to thank the speaker, Jeff Baker and Jason for helping get us through, and my legislative director, uh, Malik Wright. Uh, with that, I'll be voting aye on all with the exception of uh, LU244, 245 accompanying resos, LU235 to 237 accompanying resos, LU246, 247 accompanying resos, I'll be voting no, and LU209, uh, LU 213 company resos, I'll be abstaining, aye on all the rest. Jaeger. Aye. Combo. I proudly vote aye, and I just want to thank this entire body for being such a feminist body and continuing to produce legislation that advances women in so many incredible ways. But the legislation in regards to giving women the ability to run for office and men while having children is going to be revolutionary. So many women say that they do not run for office because of the fact that they have to care for their children. But this is a huge step to recognizing that if we alleviate those challenges, we will have more women in office to continue to create the incredible legislation that you've heard here today. So I proudly vote aye on all, and I thank this incredible body with the leadership of Corey Johnson of advancing women's leadership all throughout the city of New York. And I proudly vote aye. I thank you. I will now be replacing public advocate Letitia James. Well, you gotta speak to Col Colin first. <laughs> Happy Halloween, Tish. Speaker Johnson. Uh, I vote aye on all. I would like to uh, just make one remark that I, that, I, that I left out earlier just because I knew that uh, Councilman Rand Bramer spoke in depth about uh, the projects in Long Island City, but these three projects, uh, he told you the details, they have a very significant cumulative effect for uh, the area in Court Square and the entire Long Island City community, and these were difficult projects to negotiate. He was spending nights and weekends with Jason uh, Goldman and Raju Mann uh, attempting to land the plane and get to a final deal on this. And I know the cumulative number of new affordable apartments, the revisiting of a previous deal from years earlier to have deeper affordability on those projects for lower income people. The getting 50,000 square feet in public open space uh, for the community under the ramps. These are all things that uh, were like a puzzle trying to come together. And I am grateful for his leadership and his negotiating and the administration and Jason and Raju and getting this done. And with that, I vote aye on all.
Okay, we will now have the tally. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 50 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of LUs 209, 210, 211, 212, 213, and accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, two negative, and one abstention. With LUs 235, 236, 237, and accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 465A, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 899A, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 925A, which was adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. LU 246, 247 with accompanying resos. LU 244, 245 with accompanying resos. And revised land use call up vote is 50 in the affirmative and zero negative. We will now go into the introduction and reading of bills. Thank you. Thank you. We will now have a discussion of resolutions. Resolution, Resolution 84, urging the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign the Reproductive Health Act adopted by the Committee on Women. All in favor, aye. aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Now go to Resolution 178A, an amended resolution calling on the Federal Aviation Administration to amend the North Shore helicopter route to extend further west to cover Northeast Queens. Amended and adopted by the Committee on Economic Development. All in favor? All opposed? Any abstentions? Resolution 203A, an amended resolution establishing February 4th as Rosa Parks Day to commemorate the civil rights leader. Amended and adopted by the Committee on Cultural Affairs, Libraries, and International Intergroup Relations. All in favor? Any in opposition? Any abstentions? The next one we will have will be a resolution 285A calling upon the United States Secretary of the Interior to recognize the historical significance of Roberto Clemente's place of death in Loisa, Puerto Rico, by adding it to the National Register of Historic Places, adopted by the Committee on Cultural Affairs, Libraries, and International Intergroup Relations. All in favor? Aye. Any abstentions? Any in opposition? Resolution 358A, resolution calling upon the City of New York to eliminate the disparity and compensation paid to teachers, staff, and directors at community-based Early Learn New York City centers as compared to the compensation paid to Department of Education instructors for similar employment. All in favor? Aye. Any abstentions? Any in opposition? Resolution 420, resolution declaring November 11th as Polish Independence Day in the City of New York, adopted by the Committee on Cultural Affairs, Libraries, and International Intergroup Relations. All in favor? Colin Hogan. Any in opposition? Any abstentions? I'm now going to call on Council Member Holden uh, to talk on this particular package of resolutions. Uh, Thank you. Um, I have um, three resolutions actually uh, declaring, one is declaring November 11th as Polish Independence Day in the city of New York. Since regaining their independence in 1918, the, Poland has been through numerous uh, events, obviously, and many of them not good, uh, from the Nazi invasion, obviously, to the so Soviet occupation. Uh, but it was the birthplace of solidarity movement uh, that became a role model for the democratic transformation after 1989. And by the way, there are approximately 201,000 uh, people of Polish ancestry within New York City. 
New York City has also recognized and celebrated Polish history, including its commemoration and, uh, of such leaders as Kazimierz Polaski. You know, we have the Polaski Day Parade on Fifth Avenue, and Thaddeus Kosciuszko, that's the right way to pronounce it, um, with the naming of the Kosciuszko Bridge. Uh, it's partly in my district. Resolution 421 declaring October 11th as uh, Pulas Kazimierz Pulaski Day in the city of New York. The Polish-American hero, obviously, in 1777, Pulaski arrived in Philadelphia meeting George Washington and, and volunteered his services in the Revolutionary War. Uh, Pulaski and his legion were instrumental in protecting American independence. Uh, New York City has the annual Pulaski Day Parade uh, on Fifth Avenue, which is held on the first Sunday of October. I won't mention the Pulaski Skyway. Um, the Resolution 422 uh, declaring October 15th as Thaddeus Kosciuszko Day in the city of New York. Um, he emigrated to America in June 1776, playing an integral role in the American uh, war effort. Constructing, uh, constructing defensive fortifications uh, in Philadelphia, Saratoga, Fort Ticonderoga, and West Point. At the end of the war, Kosciuszko was promoted to Brigadier General in the Army and received citizenship. Uh, Kosciuszko is also commemorated by monument stamps, streets, and parks named after him. Thanks to uh, Council Member Van Bremen, the Cultural Affairs Committee, and all my uh, colleagues for co-sponsoring and supporting the bills. And also thanks to the Polish community, Polish leaders, business associations, historical society, and all the work they do in fostering the great Polish-American relations with the city of New York. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Thank you so much for all of the resolutions that you have put forward. I'm now going to read Resolution 421, Resolution declaring October 11th as Casimir Pulaski Day in the city of New York, adopted by the Committee on Cultural Affairs, Libraries, and International Intergroup Relations. All in favor? Any abstentions? Any opposed? The ayes have it. We'll now go to Council Member Matthew Eugene, who would like to read the resolution being presented today. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to thank my colleagues for the support to Resolution uh, 203, establishing uh, February 9 as Rosa, Rosa Park Day to commemorate the work and legacy of the civil rights leader. On December 1st, 1955, Rosa Park uh, made history by rejecting a bus driver order to relinquish a seat in the color section. Her action became symbol of civil right movement and a profound example of the power we all have as individuals when we fight for what is noble, right, and just cause. In 1999, President Bill Clinton honored Rosa Parks for her contribution to the United States, declaring her the first lady of civil rights and the mother of freedom movement. Her birthday of February 4th and the date she was arrested, December 1st, are celebrated as Rosa Park Day in California, Missouri, Ohio, and Oregon. As the chair of the Committee on Civil and Human Rights, I believe it is long overdue that the Council of the City of New York recognize the life and legacy of Rosa Park by establishing February 4th as Rosa Park Day. As a city, we should always celebrate diversity and unity while protecting everyone against act of hate, discrimination, and bigotry, as we are doing today for our brothers and sisters in the Jewish community. And um, it is only right that we honor the legacy of Rosa Parks by recognizing a contribution to the civil movement, civil rights movement in the United States. I want to thank a member of the city council, city council. I want to thank also the Cultural Affairs, Library, and International Group Relations Committee, Policy Analyst, uh, Ms. Christie, and all my colleagues who supported this resolution. And I know that if Rosa Park was alive, she would say today, like she said, when she didn't want to move, she didn't want to move, I am tired. She would say today, I'm tired to see innocent people losing their life while only they are exerting 
deceiving and human Thank mind. you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Councilmember Matthew Eugene. This is an incredible resolution that you have put forward. We're now going to read Resolution 422, resolution declaring October 15th as Tadez Kosciuszko Day in the City of New York, adopted by the Committee on Cultural Affairs, Libraries, and International Intergroup Relations. All in favor? Aye. That's not how Councilmember Holden said you pronounce it. Kosciuszko. Ne Next rezo. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All opposed? Any abstentions? All right, thank you very much. So the ayes have it. The resolutions today have been passed by a unanimous vote. I am going to now read revised call-up lists. We are still revising because we have an additional member we have to call Councilmember Andy King to vote, and then we will list the revised numbers for today. Councilmember King. I vote aye on all, and congratulations to everyone who's passed on Legislation Day, and thank you. And remember, real men wear pink in the month that we celebrate <laughs> Breast Cancer Awareness Month. God bless. Thank you so much, Councilmember Andy King. Madam Majority Leader? Yeah. We're waiting for the new tally. Got it. Okay. All right. We are going to begin from the top. We have a new tally. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 51 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of LUs 209, 210, 211, 212, 213, and accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, one negative, and two abstentions. And LUs 235, 236, 237, and accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 465A, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 899A, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 925A, which was adopted by a vote of 50 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. LU 246, 247, with accompanying resos, 50 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. LU 244, 245 with accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 50 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. The revised land use call-up vote is 51 affirmative and zero negatives. All right, thank you. Now we'll have general discussion. The first on the docket is Council Member Salamanca. He's no longer here. Okay. We'll now go straight to Council Member Levin. He's no longer here. We'll now go to Council Member Van Bramer. He's no longer here. <laughs> Something saying that this meeting has gone on too long. I think it means that people that <laughs> sign up for general discussion should be very brief today. <laughs> Council Member Barron. I'm here. <laughs> And if you check the attendance, I'm one of the ones who stays to the end, along with the colleague true. who stays is not here, Danny. But Duly noted. Event, thank you. I want to call attention to Black Solidarity Day, which is going to take place this Monday. It's a national holiday that was founded in 1969 and was spearheaded by the late Dr. Carlos Russell, whom we recently lost. He passed, and we called attention to him and his great work. This is a holiday that was uh, founded on the play A Day of Absence, which was written by the playwright Douglas Turner Ward, who many of you, I'm sure, know. And the theme of the play is what would happen if, on a given day, all black people did not show up to work or did not mm -hmm. engage in any economic or commercial activity. 
So Black Solidarity Day is used to call attention to spotlight the system of capitalistic oppression which built the economic wealth of this country based on the free, uncompensated labor and skill of enslaved Africans. It also calls attention to realize that there's a far-reaching impact of the racial equality which exists still in this country. Thirdly, it celebrates a day, it celebrated the day before election day to encourage black people to come together to discuss their political status and support candidates whose platforms advance and benefit the black community in its path to self-determination and operating and controlling those institutions in their committee, in their community. And lastly, it's a celebration of African American culture and history. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Barron. We will now hear from Council Member Rivera. I will be brief. So thanks, everyone, for your support in passing uh, Intro 781, addressing the critical gaps in the NYPD Special Victims Division. I'm hoping with this package and this legislative action, we're going to be able to improve the culture towards uh, victims and survivors of sexual violence, especially within the NYPD. I also want to thank you for uh, your support in passing Resolution 285, which calls for Roberto Clemente's place of death in Luisa, Puerto Rico, to be added to the National Register of Historic Places. Thank you. And I ask for those of you that are going to Somos next week, that you remember Boricuas, what they are going through, uh, those of us from the past and the present who proudly represent our home, and that Roberto Clemente is a very, very important person to us. And while you're there, just remember um, everything that we have gone through and what, and what we stand for, and I'll be happy uh, to take you on a tour. Uh, lastly, I want to say thank you to two people that are here, Ali Taylor and Joyce Friedman, for assisting me in drafting a bill that I am introducing today. They are from the Voters for Animal Rights, and I want to thank you for your assistance on the Wild Bird protect Protection Bill that I am introducing today. So thank you to all, Mr. Speaker. Thank you so much, Councilmember Rivera. We'll now hear from Councilmember Eugene, followed by Councilmember Richards, and finally, Councilmember Rose. So we'll be followed by Councilmember Rose, who will have the final word. Councilmember Eugene. All right, we will now hear from Councilmember Debbie Rose to close us out. Thank you. Even scarier than ghosts and ghouls this Halloween, is the fact that tomorrow, okay. November 1st, is Latina Equal Pay Day. That's right, it takes close to a year for a Latina woman in the United States to make the same amount of money compared to a white, non-Hispanic male for the same or comparable work. Now that's really frightening. For those women, their families, and their communities as they lose millions of dollars. Recent data suggests that unequal pay for equal work starts early. So to address the gender pay gap where it begins, I'm introducing 1207, which will require the city's Office of Labor Standards in consultation with DYCD, DOE, and any other appropriate agency to prepare and post a report on the gender pay gap every three years on the teenage labor force in New York City. And this report should include an examination of trends and potential solutions relating to the gender pay gap among teenagers, an examination of how the gender pay gap among teenagers potentially translates into greater wage gaps in the overall labor force, an examination and estimate of overall lifetime earnings and lost lifetime earnings attributable to the gender pay gap for women, including women of color, and an examination of the gender pay gap among teenagers in all work experiences, formal and informal, from babysitting and other freelance jobs to retail, restaurant, and customer service. A comparison of the tasks typically performed by teenage women versus teenage men in the same positions, and a comparison of the average amount earned by teenage men and women in formal and informal jobs. As many studies have illustrated over a lifetime, the total estimated loss of earnings for women can easily add up to hundreds of thousands of dollars. This bill aims to address the gender pay gap where it begins among teenagers as they first enter the workforce. My hope is that the report generated by this bill will lead to fairer wages, more inclusive workspaces, and the dignity women deserve in the workplace throughout their working lives. Thank you. 
Thank you, Council Member Rose. And as we close out, we recognize that our city, as well as our country, has been under attack and that this is an opportunity on November 6th for us to see ourselves not as a minority, but as a majority. And when the nation's majorities come together from the LGBTQ community to the Muslim community, to women, to African Americans, to the Jewish community, when we see that when one of us is under attack, that it's not just the Jewish issue, it's not just the African American issue, it's everyone's issue. And we have to vote on November 6th as if our lives depended on it, because it certainly does. And if what we've seen in Pittsburgh does not inspire us to come together as a nation, then we will inherit the country that we currently have right now. So I encourage everyone to vote on November 6th and to create the change that we need to see in our city and the world. We'll have Speaker Corey Johnson close us out. And I thank all of you here because this is a critical time in our country. Today's stated meeting of October 31st, 2018 is hereby adjourned. And I want to thank the majority there for filling in for the public advocate. Have a safe and happy Halloween. Are you dressing?